And uh, we'll begin the meeting with uh, the Wordsworth, as we have in the past. And this time, however, um, I'm going to introduce uh, Mona Lake Jones, who's going to not only be our poet today, but she's also going to be our curator to the end of the year. And um, just briefly, I have uh, noted that she is a published author of uh, The Color of Culture and The Color of Culture Number 2. She's educated at, the university, at the Washington State University, University of Washington, and Seattle University, where she received her doctorate in education. And she's been a teacher at the elementary, college, and university level, and currently serves as the director of communications and public relations for the, I guess has served uh, as the director of communications and public relations for the Seattle Community uh, College System. Also vice president of marketing and public, uh, of publications for impact communications. And Mona, would you also like to say a few words about yourself? Well, that's a lot. And I thank you for sharing all of that. I'm just pleased to be a part of what I think is a wonderful happening here with the City Council and appreciate the fact that you all are looking at us poets because we have many creative things to say and there's so many of us. And so we thank you for including us. I know that you all are about making some very monumental decisions and about very serious business. And so I chose one of my pieces today that speaks to that, and it's called The Challenge of Perplexity. Sometimes it's good to sit perplexed and to wonder what may be coming next. It gives importance to your being when you're not clearly seeing, for you have the need to ponder and to let your mind roam and wander, looking for concrete words to say why things are this way. Now, sometimes you may find it difficult to draw conclusions because reality may mix with your illusions. And it may seem that when your thinking becomes blurred, that's when your greatest solutions have occurred. For it's at that moment when you have examined all that is at stake that you figure out which path to take. And you're glad when your prediction has come true and it turns out that you knew. But when life decides to take a different turn, then simply view it as a lesson learned and know that sometimes it's good to sit perplexed and to wonder what may be coming next. Mm -hmm. right. And the other very short one is to talk about the sweetness of life. And I thought since the sun was out all dressed up today that we could talk about that sweetness and know that life is sweet. It's like a dish of warm berry pie with fresh cream melting on the top tasting so good you have to tell yourself to stop. Life is so sweet that sometimes you have to pause for a cool drink of water because the sweetness, it's almost more than you can stand. Life is sweet. It makes your body shake with joy and it stirs your soul when happiness reaches in and takes hold. Life is so sweet that sometimes you need to just lie still and contemplate because the sweetness can be almost more than you can stand. Life is sweet. It's a bed of roses with a soft breeze blowing through. And all the fine fragrances of life seem to be surrounding you. Life is so sweet that sometimes you have to close the door or open it to let the aromas out because the sweetness is almost more than you can stand. Life is sweet. It's a choir singing praises, raising their voices in melodic phrases. Life is so sweet that sometimes you have to clap your hands, stomp your feet, and say, amen, because the sweetness, it's almost more than you can stand. Life is so sweet. Good afternoon. We have a poet today, Tom Casey, who is sometimes known as the salmon poet of the Pacific Northwest. He has authored three books, The Land of the Snow, a book about Alaska, Before the Pleistocene Flood, and Salmon Time. And he will be reading from Salmon Time today. Tom Casey believes that salmon are the soul and conscience of the Pacific Northwest, and that returning them to their abundance, especially here in the Puget Sound, is a personal responsibility for us citizens. He writes about that. Please enjoy the poetry of Tom Casey. Thank you. Thank you, Nick, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd just like to tell you two things that I've concluded after 49 years. Number one, 
Doesn't it seem like most of our problems get solved by local government? It sure does to me. And that's why I thank Mona and thank you for being able to come. Um, second of all, I really believe, Nick, that um, everything that goes on in our lives is deliberate and that we have this chance to take care of these salmon and still have a good life. All of us are here because we've concluded this is the best place to live in America. I think all of you can live anywhere you want. I could, and I'm here. I just hope that we'll act like salmon people throughout our adult lives and have the best of both. Um, could I very quickly read to you salmon time? <coughs> Synchronize your heartbeat with the full moon tide. Inhale the scent your home stream leaves behind. Then harmonize the seasons that divide your life. Now you're living on salmon time. There's a rhythm when you're living on salmon time. There's a feeling you've been through this all before. There's a certainty that life revolves and never ends when you see the world through salmon eyes. So let dreams of immortality decide your fate. Trust your instincts and your lateral line. Balance your pectorals with your dorsal fin. Then leave your dread of death and ruin behind. The creator of the cosmos and the creator of the sockeye and the Bering Sea, the sculptor of the cosmos by design, handcrafted us to swim upstream and spawn new life and to raise them up on salmon time. Our lives live out their purposes like cohos do. Our fates are thinned and scaled and streamlined. Sure as winter follows fall, scour out your dread, <coughs> excuse me, scour, scour out your fears. Then all that once seemed common turns sublime. From the gravel we all travel to a destiny, ordained by old Devonian tides. What we've become can be undone and made brand new if we'll just go back to salmon time. Thanks again, Nick. Good afternoon on this last meeting. We're happy to be here, and I brought a wonderful poet for you to listen to today. Her name is Laverne Williams Hall. Laverne is not just a poet. She's an artist, an author, a doll producer, and a preacher. She is uh, in, employed at the Mount Zion Baptist Church with responsibilities of both administration and directing the Saturday Ethnic School. She is a poet who has published a book called The Quiet Brilliance of Onyx. You'll enjoy her work. Please listen to Reverend Laverne Williams Hall. Thank you very much, Dr. Mona Lake Jones. And oh, how wonderful. God opened the door on dawn, and there beckoning me enter was the fullness and beauty of nature's pantry. To the east was the rising sun, robed resplendently in reds, blending and mixing and mingling with amethyst, amber, and gold, soon to explode into a blazing costume, warmly covering a bashful noon, and just as quickly and quietly changing its shade and tone, settling in the west and giving the moon its high sign to shine and take center stage with twinkling stars that God had ordained as marks, as, as, that God had ordained to mark the seasons, days, and years, and to be the keepers of our dreams. To the south, dew that glistened on velvety roses, green grass, and foliage in due season would become frost on pumpkins and gourds, sleet and crystal clear icicles adorning and accessorizing rooftops and naked and bare limbs. And way, way too soon, softly settling and comforting the earth below with fashionable flakes of snow, 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 and more snow. While way up high in the sky, crying clouds wept the night away, creating plip-plop, plip-plop drops, cleansing the earth below with the fresh fragrance of a joy rising with the dawn, luring us to enter, entertain, and experience a new day 
with lots and lots and lots of love and laughter. To the north, high mountains and dense forests sheltered little and big creatures who dwelt in the wilds, while rivers and waters belly swelled with little fish and big fish streams through a maze of wild fruits, brush, vegetation, and plants bearing seeds, creating a rich, fertile, good soil. Soil that is embedded with onyx, gold, gems, and aromatic resins. Oh, the breath of each new day, from dawn to dusk and season to season, show and tell that nature's pantry is a marvelous mystery, a secret known only by God. And just as God spoke this marvelous, mysterious, beautiful and bountiful pantry into being, so too. He scooped up a handful of dust from the earth, sized, shaped, shaded, cured, cultured, spiced, salted, seasoned it, and breathed life into it, named his artistic pleasures every beautiful name under the rainbow. Judy, Jane, Paul, Peter, and so on, and so on, and so on, and then said, that's good, then threw away each pattern and broke each mold. My, 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 what a beautiful and wonderful earth tones we are, individually and collectively, as precious as fine jewels, one of a kind, extraordinary masterpieces, created by one greater than you and I. And I'm glad. I am so glad you're all my friends and not my foes. You're all good, cause God, from the dust of the earth, created you and you and you and you and you, and said, that's good. And I echo, you're good. You're real, real, real good. And I, Reverend Hall, ought to know. In short and summary, listen to this. God put the C in color and class, the E in extraordinary, the S in sophistication, the O in only you, and put us all under glass. So let's all just Thank God for the beauty and bounty of nature's pantry, and especially for each of us, because we're beautiful, unique, one-of-a-kind masterpieces. Thank you. <laughs>